Greetings, astrophiles. This is Pat Cosgrove, and I'd like to welcome you to Cosgrove's Cosmos. Today, I'll be talking about how the reprocess of some old data resulted in one of my images finally getting into NASA's Astronomy Picture of the Day, or APOD. Let's get started. Back in 2021, I had put a brand new ZWO ASI 2600mm Pro mono camera on my Astrophysics 133mm platform. I decided one of the early images I was going to try in narrowband was Messier 27, the Dumbbell Nebula. I ended up collecting 10.25 hours of data over three different nights, and I was blown away by the detail I could see in the narrowband images that were very different than what I saw when I captured this originally in RGB using a one-shot color camera. To give you an idea what that looked like, here's the first image of M27 that I ever took with my one-shot color camera. Now let's look at the narrowband images. These look very different than what I captured with RGB, and each filter looks very different from the other filter. First, let's take a look at the hydrogen alpha image. You can see an enormous amount of detail in the outer gaseous shell, and it sort of has this lacy detail that can be seen. Then when we jump over and look at the oxygen-3 image, what we see looks very different. Again, we see an extended outer shell, but now it looks almost like an angel, like the wings of an angel, and it's very soft. The detail are very smooth. Gradations are very smooth. And if we look at the sulfur-2 image, what we see is something that looks more like what we saw with the RGB images. These three images are fascinating in the level of detail they bring about and how different they are from one another. Because the three images are so very different, there are a lot of different ways you could combine them to create a false color image. And I spent quite a bit of time playing around with that. Let me show you some of the things that I played with and what they look like. I like the different versions. Uh, I ended up sticking with one that was based on the Hubble palette, at least the modified version of the Hubble palette. I thought that one looked most pleasing to my eye. Since this is my image, that was the one I decided to go out with. I really like this image, and I was very happy to see that it was published by Astronomy Magazine in their May 2022 issue. It was also highlighted in a profile that was printed in issue 111 of Amateur Astrophotography Magazine. And while I like this image, there's a few things that sort of bothered me about it. I thought that the stars looked a little bloated and out of focus. And even though I was able to show quite a bit of detail in the outer gaseous shell, when I was processing the image, it seemed like there was even more detail in there that I could have brought out and emphasized a bit more. And every time I look at that image, I would look at those two aspects of it. And I would say to myself, at some point, I'm gonna go back and reprocess that data. Now, two years later, we're in spring of 2023, and for a long time, I hadn't captured any fresh photons. Why is this? Well, some of it had to do with the weather. Some of it had to do with a medical issue and some surgery I had to have. And some of it had to do with smoke plumes from the Alberta wildfires, where the jet stream had picked up that smoke and carried it right over our skies in upstate New York. So while I was sitting around not being able to capture and process new data, I started working on a lot of other projects, which I ended up finishing. And I was looking for something else to do, and I thought about my M27 image. I thought, this is a perfect opportunity to go back and reprocess that data. In the two years that had gone by, there are a lot of things that had changed. I now have two more years of experience processing images and learning new techniques and learning how I like my images to look. Uh, in addition to that, I have new tools that are more powerful than what I had two years ago. Blur exterminator, uh, noise exterminator, some of Bill Blanchin's great pixel math scripts. These are very powerful tools that I didn't have at my disposal when I processed it the first time around. So I decided to start from scratch and rework the data. My goal here this time around was to minimize the stars and try to maximize the detail that existed in the outer shell. I wanted to bring that out so you could see it. 
We don't normally see that outer shell, so why not try to bring out as much detail as we can and see what's really there. My final result looked quite different than the first one. I did get those stars under control, and I was able to bring out a lot more detail in the outer gas shell. Since those were my goals, you might ask the question, did I take the processing too far? Did I put too much emphasis on what I was trying to achieve there? The two images look quite a bit different from one another. So when I have a question like that, I did what I normally do. I share it with my local astrophotography friends, put comparison images on Twitter, on Facebook, and I ask for feedback. And the feedback was kind of interesting. There's a lot of people who like the original images better. They felt that the larger stars and the color that was in the original image was something that was more aesthetically pleasing to them. But most people like the new image better. They like seeing the enhanced detail of the outer shell, and they like the fact that the stars weren't dominating as much as they were before. As far as I was concerned, I was pretty happy with the new version of the image. Those issues in the first version, which kind of bothered me, are now under control, and even if I took the image processing a bit far to achieve that, I was kind of happy with the result. Uh, I don't have to live with one image or the other image. I can live with both. So if you look in my website, you'll see a posting in there for the original image, which makes sense to preserve that since it was published in that particular form. And I'd like to keep the record of that. And there's a new entry now for the new processing of the image. So I don't have to make up my mind. I can have both flavors of the image there. But for me, I kind of like the second one a little bit better. So now that I had a new image and I thought it was a better image, I thought I would try to resubmit them for publication. And I went ahead and did that. I, I didn't resubmit it to those publications that printed the first one, because I figured they'd already dipped from that well and probably wouldn't want to do that again. But I did retry the others that had not printed it. A couple weeks later, I got a surprise email. It was from one of the gentlemen who manages the NASA Astronomy Picture of the Day program. He had sent me a link to a prototype NASA APOD webpage, which featured my image and analysis of that image by an astronomer. First off, it was pretty cool to see my image on the APOD page. And second, it was really cool that I could tell from that that my image was going to be the astronomy picture of the day for May 30th, which was a couple days away. He asked me to proofread everything and make sure the information was accurate. I did that and got back to him. Then I sat back and waited for that image to come around. On May 30th, just past midnight, I checked, and sure enough, there was my image on the NASA APOD page. I've been wanting to get an image on APOD in a long time, so this felt great. I think from this whole experience, there's a few takeaways I'd like to highlight here. First was the fact that I was pretty bummed out in the beginning of the year here. I was unable to really get out there and capture fresh photons. I felt like I was missing out. And it's true, I was missing out a little bit, but most of those objects are still going to be in the sky, and there'll be other opportunities for me to capture them later on. So I really wasn't missing an opportunity. But while I was down and I couldn't capture things, suddenly I had time to work on a lot of other projects, which I don't normally have time for. And one of them was this reprocess. So if it wasn't for the fact that I was clouded out, or I had medical issues, or we had smart plumes, I probably wouldn't have had the time to reprocess this data, and I wouldn't have gotten an image onto NASA's APOD page. I think one of the key takeaways here, and critical for those who are just starting in the hobby, is that you really want to save all the data you've captured when you're doing an imaging project. I mean all of the data. All of the subs, all of the calibration data, everything should be captured. I do my image processing in PixInsight, and I always capture the, all the work that I do in PixInsight as a project. All that data is then uh, saved archived, backed up multiple times, and available to me so that I can go back to it in the future. Yes, it ends up costing me some disk space, but disk storage is cheap. It's a little bit of pain making sure everything remains backed up, but you spend a lot of time and effort to capture that data. You don't want to lose it. And why do you want to keep it? because you can go back to it. And then when you keep it the way I'm suggesting, you can go back and you can start from scratch and you can reprocess that image. Or you can jump in in the middle of a processing stream in PixInsight and make different processing decisions. And you can go ahead and change what you end up getting for your final image. As you progress in this hobby, you can count on a few things happening. Over time, you're gonna to see tools that are improving. In the last few years, we've seen some amazing new tools coming along that really uh, are either easier to use or create a much superior result to what we could achieve with the previous tools. So in a few years from now, what kind of tools will we have? Maybe we'll want to revisit that data. The second thing that's going to change 
is your ability to process the image. With more experience, and you, learn, you learn new techniques, you learn how to use those tools, you learn how you like to process your images, and that will evolve with time. And so being able to go back and take the data for you captured two years ago and reprocessing it again with what you now know, that's really kind of a gift. So you don't want to be, lose the opportunity to do that. The third thing that's going to change is what I call your inner eye. The more you do this kind of work, the more you develop your vision for what you want your images to look like and what you want to do and how you want to do it when you do your processing to achieve that look. Every astrophotographer has a look that they develop and how they process things and how they like things to look. This is something that evolves. And so with time, what you want to achieve with your images and how you want them to look may change. Going back and revisiting that data, allowing your inner eye to guide how you process that data and achieve your final result is really nice because you may like things to look very different than you did when you first started and having the opportunity to do that is sometimes something that's very rewarding. In this particular case, I was able to fill the time that was lost to me due to medical issues, weather, and smoke plumes. I took an image that I shot two years ago and I had the opportunity to reprocess that and produce a superior result. Finally, I had something that was a superior version of an image that I took two years before, and that turned out to be something that was worthy of being chosen for the NASA APOD, and that's been one of my long-term goals is to break into that list, and I finally did that because I kept my data. Thank you for spending some time with me today, and I hope you found this video interesting and useful. Consider giving this video a like, subscribing to the channel, and ringing the bell. That will support the channel and will make sure that you don't miss any new content as it's released. And as always, I welcome your comments and questions both on this channel and on my main webpage. This is Pat Cosgrove signing off, and I wish you clear skies and excellent seeing.